Well, it's my uh, privilege to introduce uh, Professor Horst Spielmann from the Free University in Berlin. Uh, he's going to begin the session uh, on systems biology approaches and predictive toxicology. I have a special uh, warm place in my heart for the Free University in Berlin. I had a chance to do a mini sabbatical there uh, back many years ago, uh, actually in 89. So it was a very important year for Germany and a very important year for me to be there. So, Horst? First, I have to find my slide. C can you help me pu put it on? They just left. Oh, no. Thank you. Um, th thank you for inviting me, and uh, I want to thank Thomas for giving this nice overview. Uh, I have to say just up front that I am both, uh, to, as far as it's possible, a scientist developing new essays, and at the same time, I've been a regulator before I joined uh, or got the position of being head of ZBET, the first in, um, center in the world, government center to develop alternatives. And our major challenge was uh, we developed, um, I, to, to, to add to this, I, uh, uh, I coordinated validation studies. That's what Thomas is missing at the moment, that new essays are developed. How can we then introduce them into uh, the regulatory um, uh, arena, getting them accepted by regulators? And since I worked in an environment, in a regulatory institute, having been a regulator myself, we always asked ourselves, how can a regulator use these new methods? And I think the, uh, the ITS is one approach to do this. And uh, as you can see, the idea using integrated approaches, meaning combining in vitro essays and existing in vivo or other essays, started already in 2002. Even at that time, it was discussed at the OCD and later in the institute where I worked at the BFR, um, ECWAM uh, came up with a proposal, a workshop to use, as just Thomas indicated, top-down, bottom-up approaches. Of course, this idea, we had the ideas and the Americans came up, we are only accepting if you give the term bottom-up, top-down. It never occurred to us. So <coughs> that was basically to that, the American uh, contribution. ECWAM then had in 2009 and 2012 two workshops on the validation of integrated testing strategies. And finally, Thomas referred to this in 2014, the OECD came up with a spe uh, special integrated approach for skin corrosion irritation. I should say that, as you may know, the first in vitro ethics were developed in the skin and eye irritation area because we had the EU cosmetics directive just to please them. But we did, and, and the, our challenge was to integrate in vitro methods into the um, uh, regulatory uh, acceptance uh, t for making decisions on hazardous chemicals. And then I want to add uh, two points, um, uh, the AOP, uh, which was essential to get a new method for uh, skin sensitization uh, accepted, with, which was essential to meet the challenges of the EU Cosmetics Directive. I uh, developed an embryonic stem cell test using mouse embryonic stem cells, and Thomas was kind enough in his review on ITS, uh, indicating that this essentially also was an ITS. And uh, in the end, I want to refer to the ban on cosmetics, that how did we meet this challenge. So in 2002, this was before Thomas joined ECWAM, we had a white, so-called white paper. It's the first draft of the EU chemicals directive today called REACH. And at that time, we only had tested in Europe new chemicals. And then it was decided we also want to do existing chemicals. As you can see here, it is about 30,000. We estimated 30,000 existing ones. Most of them didn't have any data. Uh, we would have had to use lots of animals to meet it, just in order to meet that challenge within a 10-year time frame to test all of them. We said we have to make use, better use of in vitro methods. So the consequences. We suggested to the European Commission to fund research in the sixth, and I want to make it short also, in the seventh framework program to fund development and validation of alternative methods. And was, this was our first uh, proposal at an ECWAM uh, workshop, and you can see here what, what is basically integrated testing. Take into account background data, physical chemical data, um, existing data from humans, this for existing chemicals, and then ask yourself, do we need any testing or can we classify? If not, um, if we don't need it, you can go ahead. If yes, you do in first some in vitro assays. 
and then only in the end, animal tests. This was the idea at the time, 2002. And uh, just not by chance, in order to get in B2 assays accepted at the worldwide level at the OCD, the head of OCD at the time for testing, Aman Kutta asked me, can you send an experienced scientist to me? So my colleague Ma from BFR, Manfred Lieb, spent one year at the OECD, and we came up with all kinds of ideas, including four, the first four in vitro assays that were accepted for regulatory purpose at the time, since Manfred and Hermann were very active. And so even then, we, the, the OECD, this is an official OECD slide from Manfred, <laughs> brings up the sequential testing strategy. So the idea was already there in 2002. And this is, w uh, even in 2002, for the two endpoints, skin and eye irritation. This was important for, um, Cosmetics, you see, you look at existing human data, QSAR, uh, eye irritation corrosion, QSAR, skin corrosion, starting with the severe irritating ones, PhD and buffering capacity, evaluate dermal toxicity, in vitro tests for eye, for skin, and then in the end use one or two rabbits. That was developed already in 2002, the idea. So it's not something very new. We didn't call it, we called it a testing strategy. And even in the test guideline, as you can see, for eye irritation at the time, there was an integrated testing covering these endpoints, and as I said, in the end, one or two rabbits to confirm. And we took it back when Manfred came back to the BFR, the Federal Institute for Risk Assessment, <coughs> and uh, as you can see, he even at the time used the, uh, this an OECD slide. I don't want to go into many details, but again, existing human information, QSAR, uh, identification, um, of um, uh, buffer capacity and so on, and then you can decide at different points, is testing necessary or not, and uh, also decide if it testing necessary first in vitro and then only in the end in vivo. But here in the BFR we had the idea if s uh, predictive t t assays for Eye and skin irritation, strong, uh, the, the absence, uh, I, I, I didn't mention here, that in order to get the test accepted at the OCD level, we, uh, the tests were only passed to identify the severely irritating ones, not the absence of irritating potential. So we suggested then, if tests are developed that can also identify the absence of an irritating potential on the skin and eye, then we could do this these two endpoints without testing in animals. And we published uh, a paper that, uh, from BFR, my colleagues, uh, in which we also said we should include uh, structure activity relationships. Uh, ships, and uh, in our paper we showed that structural alerts for the prediction of potential uh, to cause local lesions and physical chemical limit uh, val values, we call them DSS, for the prediction of or absence of such a potential, provide testing and assessment strategies which only use QSERs and the results of in vitro tests for regulatory purposes to convince the regulators. And uh, as an example, it says uh, here something about. Um, uh, Aqueous lipid solubility, aqueous solubility, so physical chemical data, and then if the value is like this, then you say yes or no, no testing, and so on. And so basically, at the time, in 2004, this was the official testing strategy at the EU level. Uh, you did uh, sk for skin and eye, skin corrosion, then you did uh, structure activity, then you did eye irritation, and um, if, um, depending on the outcome, you had to go into for skin irritation one rabbit for eye, it w one or two rabbits. So this was then the strategy for skin and eye. And you see down here, you, ha you can classify corrosive, irritant, uh, non-irritant in, in a similar way with different R values, uh, R, um, classification, non-irritant, not corrosive irritant and corrosive for skin and eyes. So this was the approach, and we suggested the opposite, uh, bottom-up approach. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. So um, you starting here from existing information, then taking into account QSAR, pH, and then depending on the endpoint you want to tackle, physical chemical uh, uh, limitation values, uh, skin corrosion in vitro, and skin irritation in vitro, and the same here for eye. So this was the view at the time, an integrated testing will allow us to 
uh, identify and classify uh, chemicals for s and, and uh, chemical mixtures for skin and eye irritation without any the use of any animals. And uh, believe it or not, at the time when Thomas was there in 2005, Laurie Scott, she was from PNG, uh, chaired a workshop, and as I indicated, our American colleagues at that workshop, we came up with our proposal, suggested the bottom-up and top-down approach that I, uh, I tried to indicate to some extent. You either start with tests identifying the severe ones or the absence of uh, severe um, um, poten potential properties of chemicals. But the negative thing is it took five years until this was published, and I think this is also uh, unacceptable. I always found it unacceptable. We bring our ideas to ECVAM, it takes them five years to publish. In not a high-rate journal, it's, I think, toxicology in vitro. Usually, if you submit, they accept it. So, I mean, there is a problem. Um, however, meanwhile, ECVAM held two uh, workshops overcoming the barriers to validation of non-animal par partitional replacement methods in to integrate the testing strategies and the second one was the part of the ECVAM workshop on the validation of ITS. So th this has then been taken up uh, um, in 2009 and in 2012 and it's good here and I uh, don't like to read these things but I think I have to uh, because it's about definitions. When we come up with ITS or whatever, everybody comes up with a different idea. So in 2009 it was said, the in the context of safety assessment, an ITS is a methodology which integrates information for toxicological evaluation from more than one source, and it gives uh, reference to the three Rs. And there had been an OCD workshop which also said, and this is common sense, a good uh, ITS should be structured, transparent, and hypothesis-driven. I think this is a wonderful suggestion. <coughs> uh, and then they came back in 2012, uh, reviewed their proposal, and they came up with two uh, type uh, 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 views on ITS. They identified type 1 and type 2 ITS. Type 1 ITS uh, co covers strategies to gather and analyze a broad range of data coming from different sources and used to draw conclusions based on weight of evidence approaches. This is the one. And the other one is uh, testing strategies composed of a number of in vitro and in silico methods that combined and weight in a fixed way would serve to replace some or all of in vivo experimentation for a given toxicological endpoint. And if you say we want to validate, it's of course clear what is really, what kind of ITS are you referring to? And in that workshop, they also made the, uh, com the, 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 the proposal, or they identified the requirements for formal validation of ITS. And to make this story long story short, there's two um, uh, areas. One is the formal validation of ITS c components, and the other one is uh, uh, formal validation of the whole ITS. And it always the validation is only necessary if you uh, we want to replace um, a test for uh, regulatory uh, requirements and um, if, if the it's used for regulatory purposes. And so the good news is then that in 2014, uh, and this is uh, qu uh, quite late now, uh, after several years, uh, the OECD in 2014 accepted uh, or pr published a guidance document on the composition of the IATA for skin corrosion and irritation. Uh, and uh, can you can see here that it's, of course, uh, a wonderful flowchart which explains this, and I think due to time constraints, I think I gave you my most important message, and I can, um, uh, in order to get uh, other areas accepted, like uh, skin sensitization, and uh, um, we had to include the AOP, but maybe uh, there's time for to discuss this. So this was the first concept to uh, convince regulators to accept the new methods and for uh, skin sensitization it was the AOP approach which uh, brought in new ideas and a very uh, uh, complex integrated testing scheme that uh, allowed us to in Europe uh, to accept as regulators uh, in vitro assays for uh, cosmetics uh, testing um, the, the, the skin and eye irritation is there important, and skin sensitization, and skin sensitization, as I indicated, could be accepted due to uh, taking up the um, AOP concept that came from the U.S. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, Dr. Spielman. We'll have a chance, of course, later for discussions and more questions uh, for all the speakers. So uh, please uh, write your questions down so we'll be ready for that discussion period. Thank you very much for that presentation.